Kia ora, ko Catherine Jones toku ingoa. Uh, my name's Catherine. I'm a professional teaching fellow at the School of Biological Sciences, University of Auckland. I'm presenting to you today from New Zealand. Uh, I couldn't come over to the conference because of our university's travel rules about international travel during the pandemic. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to my pre-recorded talk today. I'm going to be talking to you about uh, my interest in um, metacognition, and this is within a biochemistry course that I coordinate. So some context for this course. Uh, this is a second year a biochemistry course. There's six lecturers that teach into it. Uh, we each teach two modules each with an associated practical lab. Uh, I teach the biochemistry of Alzheimer's disease. I find it's a really fun way to link, uh, you know, molecular biochemical mechanisms to a topic that students might start to be understanding within the context of their own lives if they've got family members um, that might be starting to have some forms of dementia. Um, we primarily have in-person teaching. Uh, we teach fairly traditionally in a large lecture theatre um, and although more so with, um, you know, more active learning uh, and you know group discussion and participation and um, tech within the class. Um, we also have uh, practical labs where they develop skills and we have assessment for this paper that is a um, small percentage of uh, formative module quizzes um, where they can learn from feedback given. And then we have summative closed book in-person tests and exams and we have some lab reports that are due. So because last year was so disrupted in semester one because of our COVID lockdowns, I was really interested in whether the students knew how to think about their learning in these different contexts, emergency online teaching or in-person teaching. And, um, and so I was going to um, investigate their thinking about their own learning uh, within this space. But then in Auckland, we went back into lockdown in the third week of semester two and so we had to pivot again to emergency online teaching and our course was now taught entirely via either pre-recorded lectures or via live zooms um, sometimes with the use of breakout rooms all of our practical labs had to be converted online and so we used interactive h5p labs for these and we had major changes to our assessment. So our module quizzes stayed the same. They were done online already, but our tests and our exams then changed to online open book. And these were time limited. So they were different again from what students had experienced in the first semester when we had done online open book, but given students 24 hours to complete these assessments. So, teaching environment had changed, the assessment environment had changed. This really uh, required students to adapt uh, their behaviour and their thinking about their learning. And the question was, did they adapt? Now, I came to Metacognition actually a few years ago at a HUSDA conference. Um, and since then have read um, Kimberly Tanner's work. And I really like this quote that she uses in, um, in one of her papers on developing student metacognition. Learning how to learn cannot be left to students. It must be taught, um, taken from Gaul et al. 1990. And I really agree with this. You know, we know from the scholarship of teaching and learning that students that have developed the ability to think about their own learning can adapt to new situations. Um, they can change their strategies when they're not working. And, um, and, and their performance can improve and that these skills are really important for success at university. So the problem that we have is within our biology curriculum, we don't really teach metacognition. We're not really teaching the students how to learn. We're assuming they already know. And I suspect that a lot of them don't really know how to learn best and especially don't know how to adapt uh, to new kinds of teaching and learning. Now, our change in teaching and our change in assessment absolutely led to change in student behaviour. The way they performed and treated open book online tests was completely different to how they would study for a closed book test. So um, I was interested in, were they thinking about how to adapt their study strategies? 
So the, the main aims of the study were to find out if students knew about metacognition and if they knew about how to learn um, most effectively in different kinds of situations and to identify some of the strategies they were using. I also wanted to know if we taught them about metacognition and got them to think more metacognitively, if this could improve their learning. So what I did was uh, firstly explain the value of this to the students. So we talked about uh, thinking about their learning in class and how it could benefit them. Then I added reflective questions into their module quizzes. So these were the 1% end of module quizzes they had throughout semester. And uh, these questions had 10 content questions and then one metacognitive question at the end. And they were auto marked uh, using H5P. So there was just a keyword involved. And if they uh, used that keyword, they would get the mark for this question. And um, these questions were based on some of Kimberly Tanner's work. And so they prompted them to reflect and think about their, their learning how they were planning their time and their study, uh, reflecting on their performance and the strategies they were using and their motivation uh, for learning in the first place. And so the kinds of questions that I asked depended on what week of semester it was. Uh, we started off in week four and this was because we went back into lockdown in week three. And so then I very quickly embedded these questions back into their module quizzes. Um, so we started with a reflection on um, so semester one, which was so disrupted because of our lockdowns and, um, and what they could do differently this semester to, to achieve a better result. Um, we then talked about, or I had them reflect on how they were planning on studying for the test, which was an open book, time limited test uh, in the following week. After they had their marks back and their next uh, their next reflection, they uh, reflected on their performance and whether their study strategies worked or not. And if they didn't work, what they could do differently uh, for the exam. Uh, in the final few weeks of the course, uh, they uh, reflected and identified how they could find the answers to content that was still confusing them. So where they could look for help and what resources they could find that were available to them. And then they finished off the course by reflecting on their learning during the entire semester and uh, providing advice for future students. Um, they also told me what motivates them to learn. Now, as you can imagine, we had um, a really large number of responses to these, um, a, a really huge amount of information that the students provided. At the start, I was worried that they wouldn't complete this part of the quiz. Considering they knew it was auto marked if they used a keyword, um, I was worried that some of them might just use the keyword and not write anything. But, you know, the absolute vast majority of the class wrote really thoughtful, meaningful responses to these questions. So they did see the value in what they were doing. So a quick word cloud to show you the main message that came from that first reflection on their semester one, and that was that time management was the biggest issue for their, uh, for their learning and affecting their learning. So from this, we were able to provide the students with some help and some resources on how they can manage their time better in semester two. Some of the answers for the reflection on their study strategies were really interesting. You know, we had a whole range of them, of course, um, and you know, by and large, they were really wonderful, reflective, thoughtful comments. And you know, they ranged right from, you know, my test strategies didn't work. Um, I found it really hard to study with this new style of test. You know, so a real, a real feeling of. Uh, confusion. They knew they should probably be doing something differently, but they weren't sure what. Uh, through to the students that I think could really benefit from developing their metacognition. And that's ones like this student here, the ones that say, I studied really hard, but I still didn't do very well. I probably need to study more. And potentially not realizing that they need to study differently as opposed to just doing more of the same. Um, then there were students that had really clear, um, clearly developed metacognitive skills already. 
Uh, for example, this student who says, I made sure to focus my strategies towards my online study. I made brief summaries of the lectures. I made sure I understand the concepts involved so I didn't have to memorize. No, they're really identifying that with the open book assessments, we're not going to ask them just to recall content. We're going to ask them to apply their knowledge. And then at the time we had thought our, our final exam would be back closed book in person. And so they're saying this obviously won't help the final exams um, because they're not online. So they're identifying they'll need to change their strategy and they're saying I'll have to reapproach my study habits. So this was fantastic to see. And so what I did from these responses was I went back to my grade book and for all the students that got an A plus in this in this test, um, I pulled out the keywords that they had used, the kinds of study strategies they had used and presented them back to the class. And, you know, we know that these kind of strategies work best for learning, but students perhaps may not have, you know, really understood that. And so um, hopefully by presenting these back to the class, um, and I was enabling them to realize and choose some other things they could do to prepare better for the exam if their strategies weren't working for them. And the thing that was really interesting was that the top students, they weren't just using one of these, they weren't just drawing diagrams, but they were using um, multiple um, really effective study strategies, um, which was, of course, fantastic to see. Now, the very last reflection they did provided some really um, incredible answers. And, and, and these were, this was the advice that they were giving future students on how to learn best and succeed in this biochemistry paper. And if you want, you can pause the video here and have a look through some of these comments that I've posted because I won't read through them all. But what surprised me was the feeling was really different to what we get in our end of semester student evaluations, which can often have a, a slight negative tone and, and, and comment things like this course was too content heavy. What I got instead was a real feeling that the students were enjoying learning about biochemistry, uh, which was wonderful. And, and more than that, they had really taken on some of the strategies and the metacognitive thinking that we had been teaching them throughout the semester. And they mentioned uh, numerous you know, uh, research informed study techniques they could use to enhance their learning. Um, a comment that came up multiple times was how they had realized that they could link concepts from throughout the course to help them understand things better, which was totally what we wanted. And also that they were, um, you know, using what they were learning in class to link to things that were going on in the world around them and within their own lives to help them construct knowledge, which was really wonderful. At the end of semester, after the exams were all done, uh, we held two focus groups. So Marion Blumenstein from our Faculty of Science Curriculum Development team uh, ran these for me. Um, there were two focus groups, one with seven, one with eight students. And, and Marion um, discussed with them um, conversationally um, these questions here about their understanding of metacognition, um, the strategies they'd been using and their development uh, of they're thinking about their learning throughout the course and the value in asking these kinds of questions. And um, any uh, research assistant, she did some thematic analysis on uh, the transcripts of these focus groups for me. And there were some really interesting findings from these. And, and of course, primarily at the start, uh, students really were confused. You know, they didn't really know how to learn best uh, in person versus online teaching and assessment. And um, Perhaps not surprisingly, there was just a really strong focus on note taking as the key way to learn. So you know, we can help students understand that there are other options available. There was also acknowledgement that top students used multiple strategies and that they'd adapted to the online learning teaching environment better than some other students um, and, and worked out ways to succeed in an open book environment. When it came to the reflective questions that we'd embedded into the assessment, uh, the focus group showed that it did help develop their, their thinking about their own learning. And uh, really fascinating, the students said that it made them 
draw attention away from grades as a measure of success or a measure of successful learning, which I thought was fascinating because this wasn't something we'd talked about in class at all. So the students were uh, acknowledging that they could see their own learning progressing regardless of what that letter grade was at the end of the semester. There was also um, the students identified a real need to manage themselves, so manage their own stress, manage their own time, manage their own uh, motivation um, to help facilitate their learning. And something that we hadn't really thought about much in the past was how much the students seemed to benefit from student-led initiatives. So these were student-led study groups that were set up um, to help them study online, um, student uh, discussion groups and insights from other past students. So what's next? Well, we're continuing to embed these metacognitive questions this year in the course, semester two. I'm going to modify the questions slightly, change the order of them to start with motivational questions, and we're going to do it right from day one. So we're not going to leave it to week four. Students said they'd wished they'd had it from the start. Um, on top of that, I'm going to work more closely with our stage one coordinators that work within the prerequisite papers for our course to try and um, bring metacognition earlier in the curriculum. And um, further to that, we're going to start following uh, a cohort of students from stage one right through to stage three, uh, looking at how focus on metacognition can improve or affect their uh, study and learning throughout their entire degree. Because the students valued the feedback from the past students uh, so much, I'm working on a message in a bottle canvas soundboard where I'm hoping to have uh, images of a whole lot of bottles that that new students can click and hear voice messages from the past students, telling them uh, their advice on how they can succeed and learn best within um, the biochemistry paper. So I'll be excited to see how that goes. And, um, and I've just heard really fantastic development that our Faculty of Science uh, Teaching and Learning Design team are work working on developing some uh, learning interventions that we can try and embed in courses across our faculty to uh, promote uh, development of metacognition. Um, so a lot of exciting things happening. I would love it if you wanted to get in touch and chat about teaching and learning, metacognition or biochemistry. Um, hopefully I get to see you next year in person. Uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you for coming along today.